your celebration of the literary arts here in Saskatchewan. Today, I'm very pleased to welcome back Marion Metella. Marion has written several books for children. She's also written poetry. She's the host of You Rock, and today she's here to tell us about her newest book, My Buddy Dido. Marion, welcome back to the show. Well, thank you. It's always a pleasure to be on Lit Happens and to, to see you. And uh, Diakuyu, thank you very much for having me here. Thank you. So we uh, we have a new book, another children's book, another beautiful another beautiful volume. So why don't we just go right into talking about this? this well, new this story. my buddy Dido is means grandfather in Ukrainian, but again, it's a companion piece to more Baba's Please that I wrote last year, and again, it has a wordle in the front cover. So this wordle has more than a hundred different ways of saying grandfather. So it's a multicultural book, and if you can see by the cover, it's very diverse. And Ola Tachenko, uh, a Ukrainian artist, did the illustrations. She's now living in Toronto and did a beautiful job. And the interesting thing is the Dido, or the grandfather in the book, is actually my dad, my dad, August Mutella. So we used it based on a picture of my dad. So it's a beautiful book, and if you want, I can read a little bit from I'd it. I'd love to hear. My buddy, Dido. Giant, short, plump or small, thin-haired, long-haired, toupee-haired, bald, every color, build in size, cheerful, silly, fun-loving, wise, my buddy Dido. Don't need more sugar, though I do like to eat. What I want is Dido's big feet to dance me around with his hugs so sweet, my buddy Dido. Don't need more money, though I like to buy stuff. What I want, whether goofy or gruff, is Dido's smile. It's enough. My buddy Dido. So it continues on. And the neat thing about this book is at the back of my books, I have recipes and based on uh, our home cooking. And so the back of this book is my dad, August. He taught my mom uh, how to make halushki soup when they first were married, mm. uh, which is made out of dough. And then my mom, of course, was a wonderful cook and became an expert at it. So this one has a uh, halushki soup recipe and more babas, please, has my mom's borscht in wonderful. that soup. <laughs> so. And, and it's, it's sort of a different tack for you because you've written several books that have the feminine energy, the, the babushkas. And, and it's really nice to see you work into a story that celebrates the relationship that we have with the men in our lives. I, I'm glad you brought that up because... It was asked, like the, the when, I, when I do book readings, they say, how about us? How about the guys? So I'm honoring grandfathers. With that one, I was God, honoring grandmothers. But this one, I'm honoring all men and grandfathers around the world. And I think that's important because they're an important part of our society and they bring so much to our, our life too. So we have to honor and recognize both. And you've, you've brought that, that joy and that delight in having that special friend who's also your your grandfather or your Dito, which mm -hmm. is a lovely, a lovely relationship to see both in the in the words and the pictures. It is, it is. I didn't know my grandfather. He died long before I was born, and my grandmother died when I was only four. But mom had two pictures of them, and I always wonder what their life was like. And they came from Ukraine in 1911 and 12, and to Canada, and imagine what hardships they went through. And so it always inspired me, and was the inspiration for my other. Uh, books, you know, my Baba's Babushka trilogy. So it's been a wonderful journey. And this is my 10th book wow. in eight years. So it's kind of amazing. I can't believe I'm in this position today. And you've worked with so many wonderful artists and illustrators. Mm -hmm. as in your Beautiful illustrations, you know, in all my book. I was so grateful and met so many wonderful people. And I always say, if you want to change your life, write a book, <laughs> because it's so exciting. Well, and you've had, you are someone who, who has delightful celebrations, um, readings and um, launches for your books. Mm -hmm. you, you really don't just get up there and, and read to us. You, you celebrate culture. You bring, in, you bring in people who sing and you bring in food and, and you really are building relationships with your readers as well. Well, I, you know, after writing a book, it's a long process. It doesn't happen overnight. So I figure by the time a book comes out you need to celebrate, you know? It's like having a baby, you celebrate when you have a baby. Well, this is my baby books, mm -hmm. <laughs> tenth baby book. So you really have to celebrate. And uh, you know, even though I didn't know anything very much about my grandfather, uh, I wrote a poem to honor him and talk about him. I'd like to share a little bit about that because um, 
you might not know anything about your grandfather, but if you talk about genetics mm -hmm. or you talk about I, my mom and my dad and knew where they came from, uh, you know, you could pick your friends, but you don't pick your relatives. Mm -hmm. So you know a lot about your, your grandparents just because of where you came from. So this poem in my Ukrainian daughter's dance is called What is Known? And I'll just uh, share a little bit of this. Piercing blue eyes, recessive gene, I am told. Round yet slender face, healthy, fine-featured nose. Hair, brown, receding like his four sons. Men of his time sported a mustache. Broad shoulders, trait passed on, large hands and feet, good for working in the fields. Farmer by trade, guessing close to six feet tall. Born 1888, village of Presapas, Sakai. Visited in 2009 with three sisters, unknown relatives and graveyards. Family home torn down. It's known in 1911, like other daring immigrants, young man of 24, traveled by train from village to now Germany. Took boat across ocean, two weeks probably puking guts out from stench, spill, sickness, little food, water. Slept with the cattle. Arrived Halifax Pier 13, documented new life, hopes, dreams of belonging. Pioneers lured by freedom, land of milk and honey. Droves of people came during the first wave of Ukrainian immigration. Promised better life to be treated like proud citizens, new country, Canada. Plowed land with or without horse or oxen, government quota, clear, 20 to 50 acres. So that's just part of the poem, but it's just tells you a little bit of what his struggle mm -hmm. and what he must have went through. And his name was Stefan Dubak, was my grandfather. And they, when they settled, they settled in Hafford area. And their headstones and their graveyard are still there. So. Wonderful. So you've shared with us connections to, to grandfathers today in poetry and the children. What a lovely way to make connections with the people who came before us. Mm -hmm. It is. And, it, and it's so important to recognize and honor them because Canada is the way it is today because of all those pioneers that came before us and the indigenous people and everybody working together to making such a great country that we live in. Well, Marion, we're out of time. It always goes by so <laughs> quickly when you sit in that chair. Thank you so much for sharing with us your new book. Oh, you're welcome. I'm Danica Lore, and this has been Lit Happens. You can find past episodes by going to YouTube. You can find me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, or you can get a hold of me at denikalore at gmail.com. Thanks for watching.